So today we will discuss about uh, the type 1 hypersensitivity reactions uh, which is also called as the anaphylactic reactions and the type 1 hypersensitivity reactions come under the immediate hypersensitivity so the action is so quick that the person can also lose his life in within minutes so now we'll see what are the stages of the pathogenesis which takes place during these reactions so now we'll go to the so first up we'll begin with a small story that imagine that a person so sorry for my poor diagram skills just imagine that there is a person who who's been playing in a forest or something and there is a beehive nearby in a tree branch and there are a lot of bees and eventually one or two of these bees just stings the person so when the bee stings the person the bee tends to give some of the exogenous proteins which are now entering inside this person's body so just imagine that the bee has just bitten the person and there is some kind of proteins that has entered into the person's blood so now we'll stop the story here and move into another picture so according to the picture so we'll just see this is the blood region and in the blood the green dots here are the the exogenous proteins that was passed from the bee into the person's body so so as soon as this external protein enters into the body the antigen presenting cells of our human body be it macrophages dendritic cells or whatever just looks at this foreign antigen and just says that you are just new to my body and just i'm going to just eat you up so the antigen presenting cells just takes this external proteins and just indulges in the process of phagocytosis so you can see that the green antigen just has entered inside this antigen presenting cell so eventually there is process of phagocytosis and a part of the antigen has been presented on its epitope so so the antigen presenting cell have just moved inside the lymph node and you can see the antigen presenting cells just passed inside the lymph node and the ingested allergen is now being presented in its surface as mhc2 molecules so a, a certain part of the external protein has been presented on top of the antigen presenting cells in the site of the epitope and as soon as it presents the mhc2 molecules the t cells come into action and the t cells as specific receptor that binds to this mhc2 molecules and as soon as the t cell detects a foreign antigen the t cell starts to split into th2 subset so you can see that the t cell is just dividing into th2 subset and so we so this process is number e so a letter e so i'm sorry for the number so it's letter e and now we'll write what are the process from the diagram we can see a b c and e so we'll just describe what these process meant in this diagram so that you can have a clearer picture of what i'm trying to say so so a just denoted the allergen enters the person's body and b where the antigen presenting cells are right a p c antigen presenting cells like macrophages or dendritic cells just phagocytosis phagocytosis of the external allergen or a protein so phagocytosis the allergen and present it as mhc molecules mhc2 molecules all right two instead of the roman so mhc2 molecules on its surface and the c the 
denoted that the T cell just attaches to the MHC2 molecules. So T cell comes into the action and D we can see the B cell also recognizes the MHC2 molecules so B cell also recognizes the MHC2 molecules which have been presented by the antigen presenting cells and the E denoted that the T cell differentiation It's not differs we can say that it proliferates into its own subset that is T helper 2 cells. So we've seen all the process from A, B, C, D and E. Now we'll move to the picture. I'll just repeat it one more that the allergen has entered into the person's blood and the antigen presenting cells have taken notice of the external product and they've started to phagocytosis and that has gone into the antigen presenting cells and a portion of it has been presented to, to the T cell as well as the B cell. So the antigen presenting cells has moved towards the lymph and it's presenting that there is some kind of foreign object. So you've got to be clear when it comes again. So the T cells recognizes on the MHC2 molecules and starts to proliferate and divide into TH2 T cell. And the B cells also simultaneously gets notice of the new MHC2 molecules which has been presented by the antigen presenting cell. So you can see in D where the antigen is also noticed by the B cell here. So after these processes, once the B cell has noticed that there is the antigen, it signals the plasma cell to produce immunoglobulins so this is the plasma cell so the b cell starts to proliferate and become a plasma cell and a memory cell so we'll not be talking about the memory cell here so we'll just focus on the plasma cell here and coming back to the th2 subcell the th2 subcells starts to secrete some of its own mediators like interleukin 4 interleukin 5 and interleukin 13 so we can see only interleukin 4 here but it also um, secretes interleukin 5 and 13 which has uh, specific functions too so 5 and 13 but interleukin 4 is the most important because as soon as the th cell secretes the interleukin 4 the interleukin 4 just signals the plasma cell that the appropriate immunoglobulin that is necessary for this kind of antigen is immunoglobulin E. So the plasma cell starts a heavy chain class switching to immunoglobulin E antibodies. So the interleukin 4 just sends information that this antigen is specifically designed for immunoglobulin E. So the plasma cell switches and secretes a lot of immunoglobulin E over here. So now talking about the immunoglobulin E so once the immunoglobulin E is secreted by the plasma cell they leave the lymph node and enter so the immunoglobulin E is generally has a high affinity towards the mast cells so you have to take into note that the concentration of the immunoglobulin E is very less in our plasma but still it has a huge affinity towards the mast cells so the immunoglobulin E from the lymph node this passes towards the tissue where the mast cells are just deposited. The mast cells initially are derived from the bone marrow and similarly the mast cells also have a higher affinity towards the FC portion of the epsilon heavy chain of the immunoglobulin E. So both are having high affinity towards each other so eventually the immunoglobulin E comes and binds in the FC epsilon receptor which is over here. So the immunoglobulin just bind over the mast cell. So this here denotes the H and here the mast cell turns into a sensitized mast cell. So I'll write S E N and S. So this is how the mast cell are sensitized now towards this allergen. So we'll stop it here and just denote the other letters.
So we have denoted till E and now F. F in the picture just denoted the plasma cell secreting plasma cell producing IgE immunoglobulins IgE antibodies is that immunoglobulins or antibodies both the same and you see and the G denoted as sensitized mast cell and another important feature is uh, during the the TH2 subcell has important mediators so that is how uh, the plasma cell started to secrete immunoglobulins E so we'll write the function of the different interleukins which are derived from the TH2 subset so what does the interleukin 4 does helps to class switching So class switching of immunoglobulin E, IgE. So it helped in the class switching of uh, immunoglobulin E from the plasma cell. And I also told that it also secreted interleukin 5. So the, the function of interleukin 5 is that it activates the eosinophils and they are also recruited to this reaction. And another interleukin is interleukin 13 which acts on the epithelium stimulating mucus reactions so we stopped in the picture where our mast cells were sensitized in number G so now we'll go back to the story which we started before five minutes or something so so we've come back to the picture and after the bee sting the person has an immunized mast cell so his mast cell is immunized with an immunoglobulin E on top of it. So imagine that the person after some 30 days comes back to the same place and has a similar type of reaction. So the person has come back to the forest imagine and there is the same beehive and there is another strike from the bee and imagine the protein has again entered into his blood. So now as soon as this protein enters into the blood, the already immunized sensitized mast cell starts to react against this antigen. So there is already immunoglobulin E which is waiting for the same antigen and as soon as the proteins from the bee enters into the person's body, the reaction starts to take place. So how does the reaction takes place? Firstly, the sensitized mast cells gets activated and after the mast cell activation, it starts to secrete several mediators that cause hypersensitivity reactions. So the mast cells, after the sensitization of the mast cells, so after the process G here, once the mast cells are sensitized and the antigen is introduced once again, so the active mast cells so mast cells get activated so we write mast cells activated so as soon as the mast cells is activated it secretes several mediators and the most important mediator is the histamine so which we should just remember about the histamine it has uh, several biochemical activities so the important thing what the histamine does so the histamine is the major component that causes the anaphylactic reactions so what it does is it causes vasodilation so the the area will receive a lot of uh, blood and then a smooth muscle contraction Uh, this is highly evident in uh, bronchial asthma where um, there is contraction of the bronchi and uh, the person feels difficulty in breathing 
and there was also heavy secretion of mucus heavy secretion of mucus and it also increases the vascular permeability vascular permeability secretion of mucus and vascular permeability increases the vascular permeability and pain causes pain because there are lots of nerve receptors in the lungs which causes um, pain and the these histamine are vasoactive amines so these are amines that are released and there is also several lipid mediators which is uh, secreted by the mast cells which also has several biochemical changes so we have lipid mediators such as uh, the prostaglandins and leukotrienes So these also help in worsening of the patient's condition. So for example, we have prostaglandin D2, which causes intense bronchospasm and mucus secretion, whereas the uh, leukotrienes, um, some of the leukotrienes like uh, LTC4 and LTD4 also has uh, certain functions. They are potent vasoactive and spasmogenic agents and uh, these are thousand times more active than histamine so so these all work together and to bring up an anaphylactic shock to the patient uh, just imagine when the uh, person's body has a lot of vasodilation the blood pressure goes down and since the smooth muscle contraction takes place in the bronchus the person could not breathe properly so all these things will lead to the person's death so as the first aid uh, we can probably give uh, shots of epinephrine that is adrenaline so that uh, uh, it can uh, produce some vasocontraction and it also can um, help in the expansion of the smooth muscle so this is all about uh, the anaphylactic reaction so all uh, first of all we should uh, know how the mast cell is sensitized as soon as uh, the person got the first uh, reaction, the muscle is sensitized and when the same allergen comes into contact the next time, then the mast cells get activated and secrete several mediators like histamine, prostaglandins, leukotrienes which worsens the person's condition and probably lead to his death.